tonight. A special report as Canada expels six Indian diplomats on allegations of killing Sikh activists. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Elia Batul. Canada has expelled six Indian diplomats. This comes amid serious allegations that Indian government agents have carried out a campaign of violence against dissidents on Canadian soil. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that the Royal Canadian Mounted Police have uncovered compelling evidence linking Indian agents to threatening and violent acts, including murder. In retaliation, India has expelled six Canadian diplomats, including the acting High Commissioner. The escalating tensions have drawn international attention. Canada is calling for cooperation in the investigation. However, India firmly denies the allegations and asserts that the Canadian government is politicizing the issue for its own gain. RCMP Commissioner Michael Duhem said during yesterday's news conference that there is a significant amount of information on criminal activity orchestrated by agents of the government of India. In late November last year, the U.S. Department of Justice announced charges against a 52-year-old Indian national, Nikhil Gupta. Gupta was charged with foiling an attempt to assassinate Sikh American activist Gurpatwant Singh Panun. In related news, a report by the Washington Post reveals Canadian officials have implicated India's Home Affairs Minister Amit Shah in a campaign of violence against dissidents abroad. This includes the murder of Sikh activist Hardeep Singh Nijar in Canada last year. Reports indicate Canada presented evidence of India's involvement in violent acts against Sikh dissidents to Indian National Security Advisor Ajit Doval in Singapore. Doval first denied any connection to the Nijar murder and other violent activities in Canada. Later, he acknowledged that India monitors dissidents. Canadian authorities have identified at least six Indian diplomats involved in gathering intelligence on six separatists. These diplomats are accused of then threatening and perpetuating violence against the separatists. Canadian Charge des Affaires Stuart Wheeler says India needs to seriously investigate these allegations. Wheeler says Canada has provided credible evidence linking Indian agents to a Canadian murder. The report says Canada has found India's alleged enlistment of criminal networks to carry out the killing. The report reveals an operational chain in which Indian diplomats in Canada collected intelligence on alleged Sikh separatists. It is then used by the Research and Analyst Wing of the Indian Intelligence Agency to identify targets for attacks. These attacks are carried out by a criminal syndicate led by Lawrence Bishnoi. The same gang is also reportedly involved in the recent killing of an Indian Muslim politician, Baba Siddiqui, in Mumbai. A senior Indian Muslim politician, Baba Siddiqui, has been shot dead outside his son's office in India's Mumbai. Siddiqui was a three-time legislator and former minister. The 66-year-old politician had recently switched allegiance from the main opposition Congress party to the Regional Nationalist Congress Party. Both these parties are strong opponents of the ruling Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party. This comes as the state of Maharashtra is preparing for provincial election next month. Siddiqui's murder is being investigated in connection with a notorious crime gang linked to Lawrence Bishnoi. Bishnoi is currently imprisoned for multiple killings. Two suspects have been arrested, while another remains at large. Maharashtra's Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar has expressed his dismay. He is assuring that the investigation will be thorough. Pawar vows to hold the perpetrators accountable. Israeli airstrikes across the Gaza Strip have resulted in the deaths of at least 29 Palestinians today. Attacks have been reported in Khan Yunus, Gaza City, and the Nusrat refugee camp. Reports indicate Israeli forces are planting explosive barrels in Al Fallujah village. They are threatening to demolish homes and besiege local families. The military has also killed photojournalist Ayman Ruwaishid. This brings the total number of journalists killed in Gaza to 177 since October last year. The government media office in Gaza condemns the loss. 
It is calling for international accountability for Israel's actions against journalists and civilians. In Gaza, at least 42,289 civilians have been killed in the past year. 98,684 have been injured. A report by the British medical journal The Lancet estimates 186,000 Palestinians may have been killed since the onset of war. The report was published in July. Israeli forces have targeted the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital complex in central Gaza, resulting in the deaths of at least four people. The assault ignited a massive fire that swept through a makeshift tent camp sheltering displaced Palestinians. Eyewitness accounts describe scenes of chaos. Rescuers struggled to contain the flames and evacuate the wounded amidst smoke and explosions. Volunteer surgeon Mohammed Tahir reported horrific burn injuries, with many victims unable to survive. This incident marks another attack on health care facilities. The Israeli military says hospitals are included in its evacuation orders amidst ongoing hostilities. At least 21 civilians have been killed and eight injured by an Israeli airstrike in Eitu village in northern Lebanon. Earlier Israeli airstrikes in the Nabatia district resulted in three deaths and 84 injuries. The Lebanese health ministry reports the death toll from Israeli attacks since last October has risen to 2,309. More than 10,782 civilians have been injured. Nearly 1.34 million people have been displaced. Hezbollah says its fighters are engaged in combat with Israeli soldiers in southern Lebanon. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told the U.S. that any military action against Iran will focus solely on military sites. Netanyahu says Israel will not target sensitive nuclear and oil facilities. This commitment was made during a phone call with President Biden last week. Netanyahu says there is a need for a timely response to Iran, signaling that Israeli forces will act before the upcoming U.S. election. The Pentagon has responded by deploying a THAAD air defense system to bolster Israel's security. It has reinforced the U.S.'s ironclad commitment to its ally. A new UNICEF report reveals over 79 million girls in sub-Saharan Africa have experienced rape or sexual assault before turning 18. The staggering figure represents one in five girls in conflict-affected regions. Worldwide, an estimated 370 million girls, or one in eight, have faced sexual violence. UNICEF's executive director, Catherine Russell, calls the crisis a stain on our moral conscience. Russell says sexual violence against children often occurs in trusted environments. The data is compiled from national sources and international surveys. Highest rates have been found in fragile settings, including conflict zones. Sub-Saharan Africa had the highest number of victims. Then come 75 million victims in Eastern and Southeastern Asia. There are 73 million victims in Central and Southern Asia. Data shows 68 million hail from Europe and Northern America. That's all from our Toronto studios. Thank you for watching Muslim News Canada. We are a community channel dedicated to bringing you stories you can trust. Please like, share, and subscribe to our content. You can also comment to let us know what you think of our coverage. You can donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv donate. For more content, Keep watching Muslim Network TV.